Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we have started talking about uh, ordinary differential equations and I would like to continue um, basically exemplifying one particular type of uh, these equations, a type in the terms of methodology of solving using the separation method. Um, and uh, all I will be doing today is just solve a few problems precisely using this particular method. Um, this lecture is part of the course of Advanced Mathematics presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch the lecture from this website. You just go to the main menu, Calculus, Ordinary Differential Equations and Types of Equations. That's where you will find this particular uh, lecture on separable differential equations. Um, well, the reason for using the, this website rather than, uh, let's say, straight uh, YouTube, for instance, or whatever else, what other um, website provide you, is that every lecture has very detailed um, uh, notes, and uh, also some topics are accompanied by exams, which you can just take. Site is completely free, no advertisement. All right, so. Um, let's talk about one particular type of differential equations, the separable uh, differential equations. Now we're talking about ordinary uh, differential equations, which means only the function of one argument is getting involved, like y is equal to y of x. Okay, that's one function of one argument. Now, um, uh, we will be talking only about differential equations of the first order, which means only the first derivative is involved. And, in addition, we will be talking about separable equations. And this is, um, this was actually defined in the previous lecture, which was kind of introductory to all differential equations. I explained and exemplified actually what uh, this is, and today I will continue talking about these separable equations. So, our uh, methodology to solve differential equations can be different, obviously. And different equations require a different approach. But there is one particular class of equations, which I did talk about in the introductory, but I will repeat right now. The equations which eventually can be exemplified as this type. Or, if you wish, you can change it or and this is the final form we would like our equation to be represented because we can do this. Now, this integral is basically integral of one variable y, this is one variable um, uh, x, and presuming we can take these indefinite integrals and we will have something like f of y equals to g of x plus c, where uh, this is an indefinite integral of f, and this is indefinite integral of lowercase g, and from this we, well, if we are lucky, we can actually take it, resolve it for y, and that gives us completely the function we need. Well, in terms of these, that would be y is equal to f minus 1 g of x plus but this is an inversion of f. So that's the plan. Now, in some cases, this plan works. And I'm going to present uh, four different problems where, with certain transformations, uh, this plan will actually be working. And um, to tell you the truth, it's probably one of the more often uh, occurring uh, case of differential equations which you might actually meet um, in tests, exams, what, whatever. Not as much in the practical life. Practical life, I mean, there are different differential equations in practice. 
um, I mean in real science like physics, chemistry, uh, stock market, uh, etc. And they are not necessarily so easily solvable. But this is a particular type which you can just think about and uh, consider this as one of the fundamental types of equations which you can solve. So let me just go to examples and uh, the best thing to learn these things is practice of this. The more equations you will solve, um, the better you will be equipped for the future. Plus, uh, again, the purpose of the whole course is maybe not as much to put some knowledge which you remember um, uh, in, into your heads, but rather to develop your creativity, your logic, your ingenuity, etc. And manipulation of the equations is a great tool to, to develop your creativity. All right, so let me just go. First example. Um, y derivative plus xy plus y minus x equals to zero where y is the function of x, obviously. Now, it doesn't look immediately like this type of equation which can be separable, but you can actually uh, do some manipulation with it. Oh, equal to 1, I'm sorry. Equal to 1. So what kind of manipulation you can, act, you, you, you can take? Well, let's say this. y is equal to now we will uh, um, factor out y so it's minus y x plus 1 because these are on that side of the equation and minus x would be also on this side plus x plus 1 now what we do we obviously factor out x plus y Mm, and I will have 1 minus y, right? If you factor out x plus y, 1 minus y. Now I can actually do this separation. So there are certain transformations which you might take which will lead you to a transformable, to, to, to a separable um, equ equation. So now I can say that now this is obviously dy by dx so I will put 1 minus i 1 minus uh, y to the left dx to the right and I will have dy divided by 1 minus y equals 2 dx okay now to make it even simpler I will do the following what is differential of 1 minus uh, uh, y? Well, this is a constant, so it doesn't really matter. So it's differential of minus y, which is minus dy. So I can replace dy as with a minus sign, right? Because I can take the minus here. Now, differential of x plus 1 and differential of x are exactly the same, so I can put it this way. Now that's easy, because if I will integrate these two things, this would be minus goes out, it would be logarithm of 1 minus y. Now in theory, integral should be with absolute value of this, um, but let me just uh, ignore this for a while just for simplicity I will use regular so let's assume that I'm looking for solutions among positive um, uh, x and uh, positive 1 minus uh, y uh, yes it restricts a little bit the solution but uh, I can I, I don't want to get into the details about considering y is greater than 1 y is less than 1 this is not the purpose of this lecture the purpose is to get to the, some kind of a solution and show you the way. Now this is technicality. This is probably more important where you really have to think about how to convert it into a separable equation. But now this is a technicality. And uh, this is equal to what? 1 half x plus 1 square. 
plus C, right? Now, obviously, I can put minus on this side. Now, plus or minus C doesn't matter because C is just a constant, right? It's any constant. And finally, 1 minus Y is equal to E to the power... So, I'm basically raising both. I, I'm using both as exponent. So, E to the power of logarithm is my 1 minus E. 1 minus Y. And e to the power of this, I will just retain as is x plus 1 squared divided by 2. And uh, e to the power of c might be actually in front of uh, e as another constant, right? Because it's a multiplication. e to the power of this plus this, it's e to the power of this times e to the power of this. And since this is any constant, I can put any constant here as a multiplier. Well, from which y is equal to 1 minus y is equal to 1 minus c e power minus x plus 1 square over 2. By the way, plus or minus, again, it doesn't really matter here because this is the constant which can be positive, negative, etc. All right. Now, I did kind of shorthanded certain piece of this uh, solution um, by not actually being very specific about logarithm of the module of absolute value of something, or C should be positive or negative. Again, these are technicality which I don't want to spend um, too much time on. My most important goal was to convert, to transform my original equation to separable format and then to separate y from x so I can integrate it. And then, yes, obviously to do it very, very rigorously, I should have really be more accurate with absolute value and, and constant c. All right, next. Uh, y minus y, y derivative minus x plus 1 e to the power x plus y equals to 0. Well, again, it doesn't look immediately that this is a separable because this is x plus y. But let's just remember that this is the sum in the exponent. And this thing is actually e to the power of x times e to the power of y. Now, let's move everything to the right, and I will have y is equal to Now we know how we can separate it, right? Instead of multiplying here, we will multiply here by reverse, right? Which in turn goes to uh, e to the power of minus y dy equals x plus 1 e to the power x, x not x plus 1, x dx. And now I can integrate both. How to integrate this? Well, this is easy. That's uh, uh, if I will differentiate e to the power of minus i, y, I'm sorry, it will be e to the power of minus y times minus. So I need plus, so it would be this. That's the integral of this. Well, plus c, but we'll, we'll use plus c on this side. Now, this thing, how can I integrate this? Well, this is a typical example of how I can use the integration by, by parts. If you remember, integral u dv is equal to uv minus integral of v du, right? Remember this? Integration by parts. So this is u and this is um, this is v because differential of e to the power of x is equal to e to the power of x times dx because the derivative from e to the power of x is e to the power of x. So I can replace this with this. So 
So this is u and this is v. So I will have x plus 1, 1 times e to the power of x minus integral e to the power of x d of x plus 1. Well, d of, f, of x plus 1 is the same as d of x, which is equal to x plus y e to the power of x minus what's uh, indefinite integral of e to the power of x? It's e to the power of x. Uh, plus c. Now what is this? e plus e to the power of x can be factor, factor out. I will have x plus 1 minus 1. So it's x times e to the power of x plus c. Now we obviously transfer this minus to this. c is a constant so it doesn't really matter. Plus or minus. From which logarithmic logarithm of this would give me would give me minus y logarithm of this c minus x e to the power of x and obviously this is the final uh, expression for y That's it. So what was important here? I just recalled that e to the power of x plus y is e to the power of x times e to the power of y, and that allowed me to separate things. Now, next, logarithm of y derivative is equal to x plus y. Well, this is actually very close to whatever it was before. Because right now I can raise a uh, or e, e to, to, to these two things. So e to the power of logarithm of something would be y derivative. And e to the power of x plus y would be e to the power of x times e to the power of y. Which is separable. So I will put e to the power of y on the left. I will have e to the power of minus y dy equals to e to the power of x dx. So now I can very easily integrate it. We did this before, that's minus e to the power of minus y. This e to the power of x plus c. So well, let's change the sign here. So minus y is equal to logarithm of c minus e to the power of x and plus y is equal to the minus here so that's the answer that's even simpler than the previous one right and the last i wanted to do something with trigonometry just for illustration and so you don't really forget the trigonometry so my example is sine of y and y derivative equals sine x plus y plus sine x minus y. Well, sounds too complicated, right, for separation. I mean, not immediately. Obviously, I have to do something. Now, although this thing is good because everything with y, now this thing is a mixture. But let's just recall that sine of x plus y is equal to sine of x. Okay, I need another. Sine of x plus y is equal to sine of x cosine of y plus cosine x sine y. Now sine of x minus y 
the second one is equal to almost the same but with a minus sign here this is a plus this is a minus now this is the sum of these so I have to sum them up if I will sum them up this thing is going down it, fa it, it uh, uh, cancels out and all I have is 2 sine of x cosine of y and now obviously I can separate them by bringing cosine here so I will have sine of y dy by cosine of y equals 2 sine of x dx clear separation now what can you do with this well now this is easier Well, let's recall that the cosine of y, if I will take a derivative, I'm talking about y only as an independent variable. That's minus sine, right? Of y. So this thing can be converted into minus d cosine of y divided by cosine of y, right? Sine times dy is differential of cosine but I need it with a minus sign because of that, right? Now, here I have already what I have 2 sine of x dx Okay, now, how can I integrate this? Well, that seems to be easy Now this is what? Logarithm of cosine of x with a minus sign, right? That's what it is. Derivative of logarithm is 1 over argument. Derivative of this, well, again, sine is a derivative of minus cosine, so that would be minus 2 cosine of x plus c almost done okay so obviously minus on the left and minus on the right cancel each other I raise e to this power and I will have cosine x is equal to e to the power of 2 cosine x plus c and now again um, I will uh, do some uh, not exactly rigorous thing I'll just uh, I'll just put by the way this is why and this is why I'm sorry and I'll just put instead of cosine I'll take arc the reverse function arc cosine right now if I will take arc cosine from the left I will get y and on the left on the right I will have arc cosine of e to the power of 2 cosine of x plus c well quite a crazy function but function nevertheless now why did I talk about this arc not being exactly rigorous well because again it's uh, uh, the function which uh, th th this is not completely equivalent to this that's all I'm saying this is one particular solution but there are some others because I can add periodicity obviously and stuff like this don't want to think about this right now so again my approach was right now to transform the original equation in such a way that it will allow separation of uh, x from uh, x from y x on the right right uh, uh, y on the left something like this and then if my derivative is just standalone multiplier 
I can represent it as dy divided by dx, put dx to the right, dy stays here, and now I have two integrated, um, two expressions completely independent of each other, y on the left, x on the right, which I can integrate separately and get something like this. And then resolve it by, by y if possible. All right, so what I suggest you to do is take a look at the notes to this lecture and do yourself everything, whatever four examples I um, suggested. Uh, if, if you get the same solutions, great. If you don't, look at the concrete notes. I mean, notes contain the solutions as well. I'm just trying to say that don't really pay attention to solution. Try to find this, this solution yourself and check it with the answer, right? Okay, um, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.